They are witchcraft tormentors. Those ones, they can't see. They will need sight from the seers. All right? So they can't see. But they are the ones that have the ability to bring injury to you the most. They are skillful engineers of injury. An average Christian in this modern time does not understand the demands of the gospel to be able to bet the purposes of God. Therefore, seasons come and seasons go and we do not actualize the purposes of God upon the face of the earth because we are engulfed in a place that we think this is the best that God can, God can offer. But I came to tell you that this is not the best that God can offer. In this message, Apostle Arome exposed a conversation that he had with a witch in Ghana. And this conversation is based on the demands that witches, people from the other evil realm, pay the kind of sacrifice they pay to be able to attain to where they are. And what we Christians must do in order to accurately move the hand of God in this season. Please watch this message and subscribe to the channel and make sure to share this message to as many believers that are burdened by the things of God. The Lord bless you. There are some people that are into witchcraft that are the seers of witchcraft. There is a certain wiring you need to have by ordination that can give you that capacity. You see, the mask that they are using to activate what they deposit on you is the mask that is inherent by your own personal ordination. In fact, you cannot be a diviner, a diviner, if you were not called either to be a prophet or an apostle originally. No, you can't. You don't have the wiring. You don't have the mast to power it. Are you with me? Yes, now, I went to Ghana. Like I said, the divine supernatural realm there and the demonic realm, there are similarities and common denominators. In the same way, uh, there are things that you cannot know except you are inspired by the Holy Spirit. And I'm not saying that those things are new. Those things are not necessarily new. But I'm saying those things are such things that you cannot know except you are inspired by the Holy Ghost. Now, for instance, are you with me? A friend of mine told me a story that her auntie's husband died. So because she was childless, the family drove her out of the estate that her and her husband lived in. So they went and took her in, gave her a room and accommodated her, and they were trying as much as they could to make her understand that she was loved, that she was part of the team, and all of that. And that was thankful, I'm so thankful to them. Uh, but you see, when they now brought her in, and there is this prayer schedule they used to keep from 12 o'clock to 3 a.m. in the night. They began to keep the prayer schedule, began to keep the schedule. They would notice that by 2 a.m., the auntie will come out and start looking for a charger that is not, is not always available. Now, who see my charger? And uh, they will now stop praying and so it happened for like they were doing long night vigils for 30 days and for 26 days she came out in search of charge you now who see my charger oh. <laughs> now you see the point is it was obvious that something was wrong but you see there was no power of revelation are you with me so mm. <clears throat> so when i say divine light doesn't come to disclose necessarily something that is new but you cannot know that knowledge except you have a revelation. That's what I mean. And then he now downed on them in prayers on the 30th day of the prayer that that woman was a witch and that she was the one that killed her husband. And that the allegations that the husband's relatives were leveling against her were actually justified. Guess what happened? And this time the revelation came by 1.30. It wasn't 2 o'clock yet. So by 2 o'clock, who carry charger? Oh, who carry charger? Who carry charger? And she was in that business. They now asked her, Auntie, you be witch? They said, I don't know. So you get something where they can't carry me for night. <laughs> you see, they were staying with... They, mm. You see, prog proximity 
to the woman did not give them access to the knowledge of the woman in order for them to have the knowledge of the woman they had to go high in the spirit it took 30 days of travel to know what is by, the, by your side think about it and when I got to Ghana I found someone that was being trained to be the warlock of a region for those of you that have been to Ghana ask for Bogatanga that's the seat of the sorcerers that's a place that even Ghanaians Ghanaian preachers will not want to preach all of them are Accra <laughs> prophesying <coughs> but there's a place called Bogatanga now the reason why I can speak is because I have taken our campaigns there to at least to Tamale yes so if you know the terrain you will know and I've gone to to Volta the places where they say Satan is dwelling I've, I've, I've been there so it's on the strength of that that I can make this comment so he was a major warlock his father was the custodian of the most robust altar in that region that means he's the father of wizards Seems somebody doesn't like this my talk. I mean. Are you there? Yes, so he's a father of wizards. And he told me that he never saw his father sleep in the night. That his father sleeps at midday. And let me show you how he sleeps. He sleeps sitting with his back resting on the chair. And then a stool. A stool for his legs like this. This is how he sleeps. For as many years he knew his father. He never saw him sleep in the night. And if you want to locate him in the night, he's in the shrine. That's where he is. And um, when he comes to the shrine, he has only one thing to say for three hours. For three hours, what he's saying to the spirit is, I have no eyes, give me eyes. I have no legs, give me legs. I have no hands, give me. He'll be singing it for three hours. He will be confessing his helplessness to the spirit. You, you come to God and say, you know, I just summon all the angels in the neighborhood. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's why your life is like this. Because you were not taught the fundamental principles of gaining access into the realm. The first principle is an acknowledgement of your incapacity, your insufficiency. The Bible says it is the spirit that quickens. The flesh profits nothing. You don't need to use your life to experiment that statement. It's already judged. It's like a mathematical formula. It's already given that your flesh profits nothing. For three hours, that's what I have no eyes. Give me eyes. I have no legs. Give me legs. I have no hands, give me hands. I have no wisdom, give me wisdom. Because he will be saying it every day, in, for, for the thing to be sweet, for him to be saying it, he made a song out of it. Is there any song you ever made, any, in your life till now, you ever made, because you know you will be coming to that altar every morning. Was there a song you crafted, because you know the dream? If a spiritist should come here and he sees us in melodious spiritual chants, he goes, oh, okay, mm, because he knows that it's a common denominator. That's what makes your spirit sweet. That's what gives it the fragrance that has a wonderful odor. So the guy does that for three hours. Then his father told him, that after three hours, that's when you enter into the realm of mystery. You see, the symbols will be coming to you, but you will not know their meaning. The reason why he's teaching him this is because he is one of the witchcraft seers. Huh? There is a department called seers. Are you? Now, you see, I am a deliverance minister, so 
They are trainings I've received from God for, for 20 something years uh, that is occasioning this my lecture. If you don't have my training, you don't know this matter. Are you with me? Okay, you don't like deliverance minister. Okay, you don't like us. <laughs> you don't like us. So <laughs> let me, <laughs> let me, you know. <laughs> If they find a woman, a dead woman, right? They can conduct a surgery on the woman. Preferably someone that labored in witchcraft for many years. The, the only part of her body they want is the womb. They operate it out. That womb, you will not believe me, so let me leave you. Have you, have you heard of, uh, what is the god of thunder in, in Yoruba? Shongo. Shongo. Good. You know that thunder, that animated thunder, the thunder they create is from that womb. No, like I said, I'm a deliverance minister. That's where they create that thunder. And you can be in VI, in that your glass, that your glass of office. And they will program it from Ikorodu here. <laughs> it will not miss its target. And the ones that control that thunder, they have more favor to use that thunder on Thursday. The average person here, you have not labored with God to know your own season, to know your shape, to know your. You know. That's what I'm saying. We, we talk about God on our lips. It will take you a journey of sacrifice for you to understand, for you to know the truth. That truth, Jesus said, you will know. 